Well, hello, hello, and welcome to the workshop for moms or moms workshop. But we are here together as a collective group of moms because we believe in supporting you. And I want to welcome our very first speaker. Um, this is Michelle, and she is a mom of three kids, okay? Because everyone in this group, we're all moms, right? We're all here, we get this. Um, she has participated in various mom groups She's even run a few of her own people. Uh, and she's joined many book clubs and she's envisioned something different as she found herself looking around and wondering what she'd like to do that didn't involve kid activities. Anyone else relate to that? I sure do. Like, okay, I'm in a mom group, but I don't wanna be a part of this activity with kids, okay? So as she worked to discover her own passions, she realized that there is no size fits one program. Do you hear that? There is no size fits one program. And the true key to figuring out your passion and making your goals happen is finding connection in a supportive environment. Therefore, her new mission, listen to this, her new mission is to help other mamas find their passions while being more present with their families in a supportive and empowering environment surrounded by grace. She has started spreading this message through YouTube, Instagram, and her blog. And by the way, this incredible woman, she holds a master's in education and she spent eight years dedicated to the classroom before having a family of her own. Michelle, we are so grateful that you are here today. Take it away. Well, thank you, Amanda. And thank you, moms, for coming and joining us tonight. It's just a pleasure to start this um, passion that we all had together to create these workshops for moms and to just bring us all together and find a space to connect. And so on that note, I'm going to share my screen. And I just want you to take a look at this um, question right here that I have for you, ladies, if you guys can all see it. Give me a thumbs up. Everyone good? All right. Now, take a look at this chart of feelings. Just, just take a moment just to figure out where you're at on this chart. For me, I'm going to admit right now that I'm a little bit anxious. This is a new for me, a new venture. I don't know if some of you feel anxious for being in here for the first time and joining us. Maybe it's your first Zoom room. So just take a moment, moment and we'll just take a pause as you figure out where you are at right now. Would anyone like to share their feeling? Go ahead and unmute yourself. I guess a little apprehensive because I know that I have other things I have on my to-do list. Like that's a lot of moms is taking the time for you and like, <gasps> what should or could I be doing? <laughs> Exactly. And that sometimes we don't give ourselves that space to do it. And that's exactly why we're here, because it puts us at when we get that space to, to do this together, then we will be able to bring that to our families and have that peace to bring back to them. And so we're just taking notice to where we're at right now, because again, we're not judging. We're here just to figure out where are we at right now? We're just observing. I see Tracy. And we want you to know that this workshop for moms is a safe space. This is a place where we're just coming here to share. Like I just said, we're not, we don't want to judge ourselves. We don't want to judge you either. We're here to share and to grow together. And that's the whole purpose of this. And so we want this, you to know that that's what this is all about. And congratulations because you're here right now. So everyone needs to give themselves a round of applause because you are here. It's time you showed up. You gave yourself time. And for me, for our talk right now, we're gonna learn how to re rediscover that spark. What, what do you have inside of you that you forgot about in motherhood? And that's what we're here to do right now. Now, I love this activity. So we're just gonna take it for 30 seconds and just 
look at yourself and look at everyone on the screen right now if you're in gallery mode and just smile at each other but baby if you if you need some inspiration just just look at him because he's fine I'll, I'll push that play again but just smile take a few minutes just take 30 seconds we're just gonna smile and we'll stop talking And sometimes we just need that moment to reshift our thoughts. Oops, moving on. He's too cute. So, everyone, if um, I'm Michelle, and my passion is to create community. And I forgot the word connection, but and connection. <laughs> Support moms who have given themselves so much. And I love to travel. And I rediscovered my desire to learn. I kind of forgot that along the way. And I realized that that is one thing that I missed. My passion was to learn again. Um, and I love to create, which is why we're joining together to create this workshop for moms. And my biggest focus right now, what my goal every day is just to be present. And so right now the kids are gone so I could be present with you guys and not have to think about that and making that space for these different moments. And so here's my family right now. Um, this was when I first became a mom. I feel like that is when everything in my world shifted. That moment that you get to hold that first newborn. You, that whole nine month period was just kind of like, oh, this is happening. This is gonna, but as soon as that baby's actually in your, your, in your arms, everything changes. I don't know about for you. And with my first, I ended up having, um, couldn't find the um, anesthesiologist. Um, two hours on Pistocin, had no idea what that meant till it happened to me. And after he was born, three weeks later, I had appendicitis um, and they found a hernia at the same time. So all these shifts in my body while I'm trying to figure out how to hold a newborn that I can't hold anymore because he was too big for me to carry around. I had to get help and ask for help. I think that's one of the hardest things of motherhood is trying not to do it by yourself because, but we think we can. And that's what this group is all about is we don't have to do it by ourselves. We can do it together and be in it together. And so just take a moment. What have you felt like this? What feelings do you get when you look at these pictures? What memories does it put um, in there of what it is like to be in motherhood at times? Anyone want to share a feeling that they are? Yeah, I would say uh, overwhelm and exhaustion. <laughs> yes. And feel free if you don't want to um, say it out loud, go ahead and put in the chat. Yes, exhaustion, overwhelm. Wanting to like, for me, like wanting to pull my hair out. They're all screaming and yelling all at the same time. <sighs> isolating, yes, very isolating in motherhood, right? And not being able to reach out to other people or even other moms because us moms know we don't want to put a, bur a burden on someone else because we're, we can do it by ourselves because we need to, we don't want to, we have so much going on. We don't want to do it. But if someone asks, at least for me, I jump at helping them, but it's so hard to ask and it doesn't stop. Right. You keep going the next day, the next week. And yes, Sandy, no one understands. It's so hard, but that's why we're coming together because we all understand it. And so what I did along my journey is I, took a mom's friendship survey and I got about a hundred responses. And in this survey, one of the key things I thought was really, um, some of these keys came out was one, um, one came across as I am probably the most disconnected to moms and other human beings that I've ever been. I don't know if any of you feel that way as well, but I, I felt that at times, but what I noticed was what women did want in support from other moms and other people was they wanted no judgment. They wanted support. They wanted positivity. And they also wanted someone who they weren't afraid to call them out when they needed to, um, if you weren't doing what, that you had that accountability, that support. Someone who could acknowledge the struggles and the difficulties and understood it, that ongoing support and encouragement and active listening, but not trying to fix your problems. Because I don't know about you, my husband's always trying to fix them. And that's so frustrating. And for me, I want a place where I can talk those things out with other women. Um, without the fix it, like coming to my own conclusions. And then I can bring that Cliff Notes version back to my husband. And he's like, okay, that's what I need to do. But I don't want to have that conversation with him. 
at least me personally. Um, but the problem is women tend to put themselves low on the priority list. So it's hard to make that connection with other moms because we put ourselves so low. So this, I'm just so glad that you're all together so we can put ourselves higher on that priority list and make some good connections. And I love Brene Brown. Um, she puts, I can be myself when I know that I'm with people who recognize intricity in, in why can I not pronounce tonight? <laughs> Inextricable, unnameable spiritual connection that is shared humanity because belonging is not in jeopardy. But a lot of times we feel like we don't belong. We're not good enough. And a lot of times it's those thoughts, that story going on in our heads that's telling us that. No one else. Because you wouldn't say that. The things you tell yourself, you would not say to your friend. In fact, if your friend tells you that about them, you're going to say, no, 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 that's not true. This is what the truth is. And this is what I see in you. But can we say that to ourselves? And so that's where we start today is how do we connect? How do we connect with ourselves? Because that's where it starts. And that is the hardest part because we are the hardest on ourselves. As moms, we're the worst. <laughs> and so we're learning how to be a friend to ourselves. And so then that's where my framework of check-in comes in. So we go through curiosity, honesty, expectation, connection, keep listening, intentional, and now to understand what it takes to connect with ourselves. But we're gonna just start off slow today. We're not gonna go through all this today. We're gonna start with asking ourselves two questions. So we're gonna take a moment to just either type them in the chat to take a moment to think about it. What is one thing I enjoyed today? Something you enjoyed about you, something you did. And then what is one thing I will plan to enjoy tomorrow? You're just gonna answer these two questions right now. So just take a moment think if you want to unmute at some point you can um share with us or type it into the chat or just write it down for yourself however you want to do it whatever speaks to you at the moment oh, i love that the gorgeous red leaves in the trees yes i was actually um going through um when I, on my drive today and seeing all the change of the leaves it's such a gorgeous time of the year a oh, movie night working on long written pieces. Oh, super happy pup. Oh, puppies are the best. <laughs> they can always make you smile just like the babies, right? The little tiny ones, that's why you keep them because they're so cute. What about tomorrow? What can we do? Well, what is something we can plan to enjoy tomorrow? yoga. Yes. I did that two days in a row now. Amanda, be proud of me. I realized that I want to get back to yoga and made that even if it's 10 minutes a day. Oh, acorn squash. Yes. Yes. Getting out to the garden, getting into the nature, going out for a walk. Yes. you living in that California heat there, Tracy. <laughs> Fresh, I get the fresh crisp air out here. So if you haven't though, um, I would like you to write this down on a paper or something for you to actually look at tomorrow and to make sure that you do that for yourself. A little post-it, something, put it somewhere for you to do tomorrow. And this is just for you. Because what you're trying to do is connect with yourself again you're trying to figure out what do i actually enjoy because that question is so hard to say as a mom you're, you're so focused on what the kids do and making sure they're happy but what about you what is one thing that you can do for yourself for enjoyment for me i'm actually going to say tomorrow that i'm been put i haven't been doing my reading as much as i like and i've been putting that off because it's like oh i can get to that later in the day so first thing in the morning tomorrow I'm going to do that. I'm going to do my reading that I want to do and not put that off anymore. So with Connecting Mamas, we want to create a safe space. And so my mission at Connecting Mamas is igniting mamas' passions by growing 
from grace and connection. Grace has been um, something that's just been circling in my head for a while, and I wanted to define it a little bit um, for you ladies, because I know sometimes it's, it's a word that has um, different types of meanings to it. So this is my intention with the word grace. When mamas gather with intentions of offering grace, magic happens, it really does, when we just get together and, and be there for each other. Grace allows us to get through the tough times by lifting each other up, giving grace for making mistakes to learn to do better. Grace for working to embrace differences and learning from each other. Grace for giving grace for mothering the best we can. We are all out trying to do our best and we're here just to support each other in doing that. So at Connecting Mamas, we embrace grace to connect and support each other as we identify and live for our passions. And the hard part, I have to admit, is identifying those passions. And we wanna talk that out and give each other grace as we figure that out. Not an easy process, especially somewhere along the lines when our schedules became everything in our thought process. And so now it's time to celebrate you because you came up with something you're gonna do for you tomorrow. So come on, get your arms up and wave yourselves around and say out loud what you're gonna do. Even if you're on mute, don't care. I'm gonna read my book tomorrow. You can unmute yourself if you want. You're gonna celebrate that you're doing something for you. And so rather than a to-do list, we have a to-done list for today. I can connect. I have an action step. You all picked one action step that you're gonna to do tomorrow to connect with yourself. I have a done list and I just celebrate that because I'm gonna say I'm as guilty as charged at this one. Celebration is one of the hardest things for me because I want to think, okay, here's this to-do list over here. I didn't get these, all these things done. Well, you know what? Two lists are important in the morning, but at the end of the day, we just need to look at the to-done list. What are things I accomplished today? What can I celebrate that I did as a mom? What connection did I make with myself? What connection did I make with my friends? What connection did I make with my kids? What connection did I make with my husband or a spouse or whatever that looking at those genuine connections. Now I'm gonna tell you one of my biggest struggles was connecting with my son. I think it's more because he's just like me and some of our tendencies. And so we, anytime he got angry, I would just get angry back and start yelling at him. And we'd always be in these constant yelling battles between the two of us. And the more I've dug into my own journey of figuring out what lights me up and wanting to do this um, connecting mamas, he has, has been inspired by that, that he now wants to make YouTube shorts for me. He took my computer over today and was making a YouTube short for me and something that we could both enjoy doing. And we say that I didn't ask, he just wanted to because he saw how much it lit me up and he wanted to be part of it. So I think it really comes down to the more we do find what lights us up, we're going to find that genuine connection with our kids that we don't have to feel like, oh, I have to do this right now with them. But it's not necessarily something I want to do. And so you find those, you're looking for those genuine connections with people when you're showing who you truly are and making those connections. And so I look at Martha Beck, who has been inspired by to live a life that is wrong for you is a form of dying. There are people who have lives that look perfect. They try to be happy. They believe they should be happy. They are trying to like it, but it's often off course from their North Star. They aren't satisfied. So we have to define that North Star. We have to figure out our passions and strive to go towards that. Because when we do, it lights up and the people around us get into that light. Like my son, why help me with my YouTube shorts? Without even, be, without even asking. Just something he wanted to do to help support me. And vice versa, I wanna help support him in doing his ventures. He wants to make a podcast. And so I wanna help him do that. And again, all this inspiration came from me wanting to be an entrepreneur. And so it's going towards what you are passionate about that will inspire those around you. And so as I worked to find my North Star and discovered my whole self, there are two things that helped out most. Number one was community. Because as moms, we keep saying we want to do this alone, that we can do this. I can go pick up my self-help book. I can go read it. But if I don't have someone to discuss it with and truly listen and validate my thoughts, I'm going to be stuck in my own head. I'm going to be stuck there circling and circling and circling. So we want like-minded moms who want to grow together, to come together and have these conversations so that we can be inspired by each other and lift each other up. And it helps to have a mentor 
someone who has already started down this path to help guide this so we can create that inspiration and keep it going. And so I'm offering to you guys today um, free access to my um, check-in course. So you can start to do it on your own if you would li um, like to get an idea and, and feel if you want to work together more at some point. But here is some free access for you. Go check in and start to see what it's like to do it by yourself. And set yourself, I have a guide for you. Like it's basically each video is, will take you 15 minutes to get through each letter with a video and an activity and to get you started. But if you realize you want some help and you wanna do it together, give me a call. Let's set up a 30 minute check-in call free of charge. Just wanna connect with you and see what I can do to help serve you. And Amanda's gonna throw in the link for um, both the freebie and the call and take your choice. Take what you, what feels right to you today. But all I ask is that you check in with yourself regardless of how you do it. Start looking at what you enjoy more and just start going for those aspects in what you wanna do. And so you can come to connectingmamas.com for more information. I have just um, been updating, again, YouTube Shorts. There's a couple on there from Liam. He's working on getting my short list up. So um, Connecting Mamas at YouTube. And tomorrow, if you are free at 11.30 CST time, there's a Zoom link on the top of that free course that Amanda just popped in there. Come join us for a mom circle and see what it's like just to connect on Zoom and see how we can connect together and see what it's like. Give it a try. And so I want to leave you with this quote from Jamie Kern Lima, who was actually the very first seminar I ever took was her full long day seminar when she came out with her book, Believe It. And so from Believe It is being vulnerable is hard really hard but I've learned that sharing our truth flawed authentic self is the real way to connect and love can happen it's the only way to step into our full power and purpose in life it's being finding that north star driving our passions towards it and connecting with people who inspire that and again it's not that we necessarily will keep the same connections all the time but it's making sure that for the part in our life, as we are working towards our new store, that we find people to help bring that passion for um, more. So I want to thank all of you ladies, and I hope that we'll connect more. Um, again, the free um, courses in there, as well as Counterlink, and Amanda even threw in the YouTube station for you as well. So let's connect. And I thank you all for coming tonight. I will stop sharing. I think we lost our two participants. <laughs> no big deal. Nope. But it was. Yeah. I did my twenty-five minutes perfectly. Yay! Without trying. Sounded great, Michelle. Thank you. Yeah. So, do we take a little well, break here, or do we just want to? Well, if we had more participants, if well, actually, we'll just start with you guys. Any, we'll just do some Q and A. If you have any questions or comments or anything that anyone wants to share. Um, We'd have a little break before, then I would um, go ahead and introduce um, Jenna next. So I was interested in your son's um, YouTube experience. Yeah. So I know that YouTube is wanting to, um, you know, compete with, I guess it's Instagram or is that what is it kind of what TikTok. TikTok. Oh, compete with the TikTok. Okay. So he has figured all this out for you. Well, no, he just, he took, he's been doing some Canva aspects at school. And so he made some shorts through Canva. Um, yeah. So he, um, I wonder if I can, um, Amanda has a link up work. I could probably show it to you guys real quick. The one that he, um, I've, I've only posted one he um, came up with, um, but this was all him. It was not me at all. Um, which one is it right here? Okay. So I'm going to share a screen again and um, make sure that I share volume because it's only like 20 seconds long. Um, so here we go. That is short. <laughs> yeah. Well, shorts are, are anywhere from 15 to a minute so, oh. or anywhere from zero to like being, mm -hmm. so they're not very long. So this is um, the one that he created for me. So you guys can see.
kind of poignant. That's awesome. <laughs> so that's my 11 year old. And um, I, the last part was something I had um, already done for other shorts, but um, the, the little check-in part, but um, yeah, he came up with all of that all on his own. So that's can amazing. We, yeah. Can we see the one of you doing, uh, looks like a meditation? Oh yeah, sure. And that looks like with your kids? Um, kind of, you'll see it's, it's actually, okay. supposed to be, it's a funny one. Oh, okay. Um, Oh, I need humor. That was actually Bella's plan like she I mean that she came up with that idea of wanting to use pumpkin and and do that like the the concept of like doing the like that was her idea mm -hmm. um, so they've been helping come up with like plans of being funny and stuff and like what they can do to help and so that was her whole concept like you're pretending to meditate I'm gonna throw pumpkin on you that was her idea <laughs> <laughs> I have one that keeps bugging me this afternoon so uh how old are your kids they're 11 and so Be Liam's 11, Bella's nine, and Lily's seven, six, six, I'm kind of trying to age her. <laughs> I know. So, yeah, so it, um, did it, so yeah, so that's, um, kind of where, um, I'm at, um, but yeah, it's fun having them participate and want to help, and, like, um, Bella wanted to even go to the, um, so when I had a table, she wanted to come help, but it was going to be too long of a day. So we ended up not, she had swim that morning, but like, it's, it's fun watching them. She wants to help cut out stickers, she, you know, that they want to help do these things. It's helping them see how to create these things. But I really cool. um, feel it's been a good thing. Uh, I can and, use their help. Yeah. <laughs> I'm finally so letting them taught, help a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. So when you taught school, what grade did you teach? So I ended up doing all my student teaching in um, elementary, but then when I moved back to California, I had trouble getting a job. So I'm teaching high school for seven and a half years, I ended up moving to the middle school when I knew I was going to move to Wisconsin. And then in Wisconsin, I could only get an elementary degree. So I taught um, first grade for half a year when I came in January and left in June. So it's expensive to be home, <laughs> um, to be working in that. But we are just about out of time because we're about to hit the 6.30 mark. So we're going to um, start introducing Amanda. No, Jenna is next. Sorry. I have, make sure I have this. All right. Are we ready? Do we have any? Um, all right. So thank you all for here with me. Um, now we are going to introduce Jenna Jockets, who is amazing, an amazing architect and nature play expert. Doing nature plays just sounds so intriguing to me. She <laughs> teaches parents and early childhood educators how to create sensory rich base play. So we got the nature and the sensory and bringing it all together. That just boggles my mind because it sounds so amazing. And space so that the children can learn to grow with their bodies, their minds and spirits all together. Because when we combine the nature and the play, you know, we're going to have magic. <laughs> so of all the things she does, her favorite thing as a, is being a mom to amazing seven-year-old twins. So she got twin girls. She's gonna have to tell us a little bit about that. Take it oh, away, yeah. Jenna. All right. Well, thank you, Michelle, and uh, thank you and congratulations for all of you to be here with us. Um, yeah. So I'm a landscape architect, nature play expert. I've been doing this work for over 22 years, and I've done a lot of designs of uh, nature-based play, learning, and therapeutic landscapes for kids of all abilities, kids of all diversities, uh, special focus for kids with autism and sensory processing disorders. Um, so I've taken all of that experience, and now I'm teaching parents how to create sensory-rich nature play spaces at home. I'm teaching early childhood educators how to create sensory rich nature play spaces um, at their um, child care center, wherever they're working with their kids. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I have twin daughters. Uh, they're seven years old. They are amazing. They have taught me more in these seven years than I've learned in my 22 years of doing my work. And I'm so thankful for them and their energy every single day. Um, 
So since our sessions are short today, I'm just going to jump right into my information. And I have a lot of really amazing information for moms. I mean, we're all moms here, right? So, And we want the best for our kids. Um, we want them to be happy and healthy. We want them to have fun and enjoy their lives. We want, to we want them to discover what lights them up, um, yes. to enjoy their learning and finding their fascination, what fascinates them, all these new things that they're discovering in their life. And I'd love to hear from you moms, um, maybe put in the chat what you want for your kiddos. I'd love to hear this. You know, ultimately we want the brightest future for our kids, right? We want them to have the brightest future and that's our mom mission safety and fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and this is possible for all our kids. Um, and, and through my work, you know, the 22 years I've been doing all this, we want our kids to thrive. That's right, Amanda. Um, my 22 years of doing this, I've realized there's one really big factor that, that us moms need to understand and pay attention to in our kids uh, so that we can better help them um, have a happy childhood and then set them up for a happy, um, productive life. And, and that one thing is in order for our kids to be happy, their nervous system has to be happy. And so I'm going to give you a quick quick primer on our nervous system. It's really a complex system in our body. Our nervous system helps us do things like breathe and move and think and eat and all of these things that are essential to our survival, right? Um, it's also our body's receiver of information. So we go through our daily lives and we go in, you know, different you know, places and spaces and and throughout all that, our, the environment is sending us information. Our, our sensory systems are picking up information about our environment. And it really does start with our senses. So we have five classic senses, you know, sight, touch, taste, smell, and sound. But there's actually two additional sensory systems that are just as important in our ability to navigate our daily life in order to thrive in our daily life. And so one is our vestibular system. And these are um, movement-based systems, body awareness systems. So vestibular system and our proprioceptive system or proprioception. And if you want to know more about the seven senses, I invite you to hop over to my Facebook page, N is for Nature Play, where I talk a lot about the seven senses, nature play, and why it's important in childhood, why it's important to understand this. So um, let's see here. So Basically, our sensory systems pick up information from the world around us. That information travels through our nervous system as like electricity and, and chemical signatures and all the way to our brain. And our brain is a really important part of our nervous system. And so in the brain, it processes, integrates, interprets that information and sends information back through those channels to our bodies to tell us how to react to tell us how, you know, maybe it informs a decision that we're having to make in something that we're doing in an activity. Um, basically, our nervous system informs everything we do in our waking lives every day. And um, it's all happening lightning fast. We aren't even aware of it. We take it for granted. You know, we take it for granted that our nervous system is working well. And so our nervous system is our body's way of understanding the world, of understanding ourselves within the world, and a healthy, happy nervous system is the difference between thriving rather than just surviving within our lives. And so to talk about childhood, I mean, that is such a magical, rich time um, because during this time, you know, our kids are literally soaking up all the information they can and about the world, right? Um, every sensory system is on overdrive. And it, you know, it starts in the womb for them. I mean, they're picking, their sensory systems are developing within the womb. And then once they pop out, man, their mission is to um, be involved with as many different experiences as they can, to uh, experience as many sensory experiences as they can, because um, what their bodies are doing is essentially building a database 
of information that they, as they move throughout the world, move throughout their lives, they draw on that database to inform them if they come upon like a new experience or uh, experiencing something with the senses that they haven't experienced before, they draw and they recall that database to help inform them how to navigate this new experience or to make sense of what their systems are detecting. So um, this, the, how big their database is, how big their foundation of experience is, really it correlates to their ability to lead smoother, more enjoyable, more centered um, daily lives. And so as moms, we really need to pay attention to our kids' nervous system, right? Because in today's world, there are a lot of things that are in our control. And there's a lot of things that are out of our control that may cause stress to our kids' nervous system. And so, uh, you know, pop in the chat if, if I'm talking and you think of something else that you'd like to share with the group. But some of the things that are in our control are like processed foods. Um, are they getting too much screen time? Because that's not a very, uh, you know, it doesn't give great healthy sensory uh, stimulation. Um, are they getting enough sleep? Um, some things that are out of our control might be stress and pressure that comes in various forms during school. Um, a big one is the pandemic. Uh, so the pandemic's been really hard on everybody. We all, moms, kids, everyone is our, we're essentially walking around with really grumpy nervous systems because we've been stressed for so long. Um, and, you know, for adults, we can rationalize. We can kind of make sense of what's happening. Um, we can feel a, a relative sense of safety and security because we're in an age where we can do that. We've, you know, we're responsible and adults and that sort of thing. But kids, you know, they don't often have that luxury um, because they rely on us, on adults, for their security and safety and um, provide for them, you know, their basic needs, right? Um, so it can be really challenging for them to feel safe, to feel um, um, comfortable in their body because they're in this kind of chronic state of stress. Their nervous system is uh, imbalanced. Um, and so, you know, we are, we are so, as moms, we're so connected with our kids, right? And so we have kind of special powers in being able to detect, recognize when our kids are kind of out of sorts, when they might be, in, you know, they're overreacting to situations perhaps, um, when they aren't uh, functioning at their best, that gives us clues that their sensory or that their nervous system is imbalanced. And there are steps that we can take as moms to help our kids get back into balance because we really, that's where we want them. And so what does it look like when our kids' um, systems are imbalanced or dysregulated? When that happens, um, their systems go, they go to, into fight, flight, or freeze. Um, and essentially this is survival mode, right? Their entire being is in a state of arrest because their bodies and their brains are focused on one thing and that is surviving that is getting through that situation and right now the situation has gone on a long time chronic stress um and so when they're in survival mode they're they are not capable of doing all of the things in childhood that they need to be doing for appropriate growth and development and, and doing all these beautiful things that they were put on this planet to do um you know, their, their, their bodies are focused in just getting by. And so they're not able to learn uh, at their best in the way that works best for them. Um, they might have trouble taking in information. They might have trouble focusing or paying attention. Um, they may have problems, uh, trouble, challenges expressing their self in healthy ways. They might be overreactive to so potentially what, what we might think are minor situations, but they may not be minor to them in that moment. Um, they may be having problems um, playing productively, um, using their imagination and creativity to the extent that they can, because children are, are you know, that's one of their superpowers is their imagination and creativity. So what we want in all of our kiddos, because we're their moms, we want what's best for them, is a happy, healthy nervous system. That's really what it boils down to. 
And in this state, when their systems are happy, then um, superpowers, yes, imagination, thank you. Um, in this state, our kids can easily access that natural state of flow where they can be in rich, deep learning, where they can have meaningful, expressive play, where they can be more imaginative and more creative than the day before, where they can more easily connect, connect with others, connect with us, connect with nature, connect with themselves. And, you know, so as moms, we have a, we have a really prominent role in helping our kids be in this state of happy nervous system, state of flow, their best humans. Um, and so when we see them getting out of balance, there are some steps that we can take because they do need us to pay attention to this part of them. It's really very basic, at a very basic um, um, importance. And so the one thing that we can do when we see them kind of get out of balance, overreaction, they're not their best selves, we can take a moment and we can help them get back into their bodies. And this means we need to get them to move their bodies, right? To get that energy out. We need to get them to have, uh, to use all their senses, you know, all of the seven senses, you know, the five classic plus the two movement-based senses and any movement will stimulate the um, one or both of those movement-based sensory systems. Um, and then the best place we can do this is outside because mother nature has gifted us all of the wonderful sensory experiences that we could ever want to have um, in a multi-sensory um, uh, term. Um, we need to get them outside more. And it doesn't have to be out in wild nature. It doesn't have to be at a, at a national park. It can be in our backyards. If you're in an apartment, it can be on your balcony. Um, but I, what I'm going to get into in the next bit of my session is how do we create these sorts of spaces that do calm the nervous system, that do bring our kids back into balance, where they can more easily access that state, where they can be their best selves and have their best experiences. And so I have a question for you. What if you knew, what if you knew in your heart that your backyard or your balcony or whatever space that you have to work with has the power to feed your child's senses and to calm their nervous system so that they can grow and develop with joy and confidence? I mean, wouldn't that make you feel good? I mean, to me, that's just like a exhale, like I'm supported. I have help in all of this, right? And it, you know, sometimes help comes in the form of the spaces that we create at home. Sometimes we need those really healing supportive spaces. And for kids, it's their play space, right? And so if, if you have um, your, a backyard space or whatever space you want to work with, you think of it as a value, as a benefit um, for your child's health and well-being. Also think of it as a valuable tool to support you in your best momming, right? So, you know, it, it is so important to create that space at home for them because then they can use that space daily. They don't have to rely on, oh, what's at school? Oh, it's at my daycare. daycare. No, it's at home. And, and your child can be in it any time of day, every day. So when they start to get out of balance, they know where to go to self-regulate, to bring themselves back into their bodies, back into the best state that they can be in. Um, when they're feeling really good, it's a space they can go in to elevate their play experience, to elevate themselves as, as tiny humans. And then, you know, it's a space they can go to for daily maintenance of their, of their nervous system. And so, um, for the rest of the session, I'm going to share my screen because I want to focus on giving you all some inspiration, some ideas for bringing nature play into your child's home space, because nature play, I'm going to tell you, is an absolutely incredible tool for your child's growth, development, well-being, learning, imagination, confidence, and so many other things that we care so deeply about as their mamas. So I'm just going to share my screen really quick. And <clears throat> show you some great images here. Okay. 
Let's see, I always have to, here we go. So for those of you who aren't as familiar with nature play, nature play intentionally uses natural materials and features to create a wide variety of play experiences, learning opportunities, and therapeutic value. And the therapeutic value that goes back to what I taught, what I've been talking about with their nervous system, but it also, there's so much more to the therapeutic value that, that a nature place setting can have, especially if you have a kiddo with uh, additional support needs, um, neurodiversity, mobility issues. I mean, anything, I mean, these are really important spaces for all kids to be their best selves. And nature play also gives kids the necessary healthy sensory stimulation to grow and to develop in their own way. And that goes back to the seven senses. And again, if you want to know more about the seven senses, I do an entire program on it. Um, check out my Facebook business page because there's a ton of information on there and, and more added weekly. So nature play in your backyard or whatever space you're working with is going to look different um, your space is going to look different from the next mom space, the next family space, because they are all based on, first and foremost, they're based on your own kids, your own unique kids. They are unique human beings um, with unique growth trajectories, unique beauty. But what are their, do they have, you know, all kids have their own needs, right? All kids have their own loves and interests. And so you really kind of can tailor your nature play space to them and, and make it a space that is irresistible for them. They can put down that stinking iPad and go outside. And my daughter here, this is Etta, she's um, she's building something in, in the loose parts area. Um, the day before that upright twig was a slingshot. Today, I, I couldn't, I can't remember what she was doing with it in this picture, but there's so many different ways that you can create um, nature play space based on your own kids and based on your own space. And so you might have something like a fairy garden. Could be, doesn't have to be any big dramatic feature. It can be very small and still be very effective. Um, I built a sensory garden for my kids at my own house and you'll see some pictures here in a minute. But um, so fairy gardens, we have several of these around the sensory garden. Here's our here's our home. Um, log segments, you can find these for free on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. Install a few of these and this is great for the movement based sensory systems. Jumping, climbing, balancing, um, all of these movement based activities are fantastic when you have something as simple as logs in your landscape. But but we also use these to picnic on. We sit and read stories at night. So they can be multi-use and used for family bonding. Um, sensory plants. This image, so the logs you just saw are on the left of your image. And so just in this image, um, I have sensory plants in here that stimulate all five classic senses, sight, touch, taste, smell, and sound. Um, and again, my Facebook information has so much information on sensory plants. Edible gardens. Um, if you have or want to have an edible garden space, please do. And then please consider letting your kids have their own little ceramic pot or space within the edible garden so they can grow what they want. And then they are the ones who are nurturing the plants, watering the plants, getting to harvest all the healthy food and eating that. Um, you know, edible gardens are tied to healthy living. Sand play is really, really important. So much tactile um, play opportunities here, especially when you combine it with water. And here's an example of like, you know, kids playing, you know, doing mud pies. You know, this is a really messy yet very simple and effective um, activity for kids. And guaranteed these little boys, their systems are calm. They are focused on that activity. You know, these are activities that where, you know, the hours pass like minutes. That's how engrossed they are. And that's where the magic happens for kids. And then the last item is loose parts. And there's a whole theory that's based in child development and early childhood education on the value of loose parts. And essentially loose parts are um, natural bits that kids can pick up and manipulate and create things and and build things kind of like outdoor legos so, so to speak they can build things deconstruct build in new ways um but again this is these are this right here is great for imagination um 
kind of like that engineering mind, you know, if you've got a kid who's really kind of in that engineering and likes to create different things and cause and effect, loose parts, way to go. So that's the last item. And so if you want more information, I have a ton of information. You can find me on Facebook and as for Nature Play. And if um, Michelle or Amanda, if you want to pop in my, my Facebook uh, link, that'd be awesome. And then if you want more than that, uh, I really invite you to book a free 20 minute Nature Play quick consult with me where we can talk through, um, you know, your kiddos, you know, what are their needs? What are their loves? Um, what are their, are their challenges? Are there challenges with the space you want to work with? So we can walk through those things. And then um, I'm going to shop, stop, share for a minute. Um, walk through those things and um, come up with the, the first few steps that we can take to have you um, start creating a really cool play space at home. Um, let's see here. I'm challenged at the moment. There we go. Um, so yeah, um, and you know, I am always here. I love to answer questions because you know, my mission right now, I mean, if I can help you, uh, if I can support you, um, be the best mom that you can be for your kids and support them in the way that you truly want, I would be honored to, um, be, to help you in that way that, that I can. And, um, so that wraps up my session. And again, thank you so much for being an engaged participants and, and uh, um, sending lots of love through the chat. So, and I don't know if we want to open it up for questions or if I can transition it to Amanda, what do we want to do? I have a question. Yeah. So um, having been a, a teacher in inner city schools and, and all over the place, um, so many kids don't have any kind of access and you'd think it would be happening at school. But what I really noticed a trend is we used to have some fun play equipment, but all of that has had is taken out. And even in our local park here, um, I, I think it's just fear over lawsuits. And so we have the most bland, boring stuff. I mean, it doesn't even look nice. And I thought, who made that decision? Um, and it's it's just it's it's just the opposite of what kids need or what enjoy. It doesn't really lend itself to anything, and it just seems to be a trend that we're in. And I can only think that it's about liability. Yeah, so that, that is. So a, we that's... don't have these fun spaces, or right. Um, I'm just thinking. Even um, funny in Texas, in a district where I was, they put up the schools but it was up to the school to get the funding to put in their play equipment. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it wasn't equal. Yeah. I know it wasn't equal at all. And we ended up with just, you know, what PTA could earn. And um, I don't know how, do you, I'm sure you see this. You said that you work with preschools and private things, but what about in the big public sector? Yeah, and, and that's a challenge because, um, you know, in in our in our country at least the the traditional playground that we see in all the parks and schools has become the standard and that's what we feel like you know our municipalities and schools feel like they need to provide in order to provide healthy movement and you know activity for the kids but it's very one dimensional um very one dimensional experience i mean any child going to any playground knows exactly how to use it um and the funny thing is is that there are more accidents like hospital related accidents on playgrounds compared to nature based settings and the reason there's a couple reasons but the biggest reason is is because nature changes every day Anytime you go into a nature-based space, it's going to be different than the time you, that you were there before. And that really engages kids because they have a new way to interact. It's not so prescriptive. It doesn't tell them how to play. Um, so yeah, it is, it's a, it's a big challenge. Um, and, and luckily there's a kind of a green school movement happening right now. California is a, is a big place where a lot of it is happening, um, where they are revamping schoolyards and going toward more green schoolyards with edible gardens and nature play areas and, and that sort of thing. And moving away from the asphalt and the big lawn spaces, so to speak, and the, and the 
post and platform playgrounds, thankfully. But, you know, that's why we as as parents have to um, get our kids out in nature, whether that's our backyard space or taking a walk to the park or anything that just kids gets kids outside and moving and using their senses. I mean, it's it's really it. It's up to us to to be that for the, our kids because the rest of it will follow. The rest of it will follow. It's already going that direction. Just going to take a long time. So then I will ask, um, so when you are working with, um, I suppose it's like a private preschool or something like that, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, I think it, it's different for putting it in for a school than rather your own backyard. It is. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is that, you know, I, either way, it doesn't have to be big and complex. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, a lot of the playgrounds go for the wow factor and that they've got to be more and better to be interesting. Well, with nature play, you can do, um, you can build things yourselves, whether you're, uh, you know, a parent or a, um, preschool owner, so to speak, uh, you can do a lot of things yourself. Um, and there are a few things that you'd want to bring a contractor in to do. Um, you know, I always recommend if like if you're a preschool owner to do a plan, a landscape plan, a, a playscape plan so that um, you can make um, steady forward momentum on installing your project and not make it more expensive by doing something and then having to undo it because you forgot to do this other thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's always great to have a plan. Um, you know, if you're going to do a larger project. And so that, that's a lot of the work that I've been doing. But there's so many features like enhancing a playscape. You know, you may have a, um, a post and platform um, structure at your place at your preschool, but maybe you can supplement it with sensory plants and a nature loom and a outdoor mural space or um, installing some, you know, maybe some parents have skills and they can provide a piece of sculpture or donate a, a garden statue or something like that. There's so many ways that you can enhance what you already have in, in very fun and easy ways. All right, Amanda, you're ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna introduce Amanda. She's amazing. I've worked with her and she's helped me be a better mom. But Amanda is the creative innovator of Emoset. She is a two-time best-selling author on Amazon. She's a transformational parent coach and believer that our world will be a better place because of our kids and our teens. She is a joy-filled mother of two children who practice healthy emotional living each day. And she created Emoset because she understands the unique needs of kids from her 22 plus years in education and her boots on the ground um, training as a mom. Amanda understands that when kids are self-aware, then they are better equipped to understand other humans. Amanda spends her free time in the wilderness of the Colorado Rockies and at her neighborhood Pilates studio. She and her kids enjoy paddleboarding, family movie nights, and walking the dogs. Amanda, it's all you. All right. Hey, thank you, Jenna, for that gorgeous introduction. And it's such a pleasure to be here tonight. I, I want everyone to know that I'm a real mom. I'm much to everyone's surprise. We're all real moms, right? So I'm a real mom. And I also, um, you know, there, there may be distractions and that's just part of, you know, doing, doing the things at home. I've got, I've got dogs and I've got kids. Believe it, right? So I know we will all have grace if all of a sudden an eruption uh, incurs during this, this fabulous session, but we're gonna move forward anyway, and I'm gonna move with you. So let me, and you will notice I am working from two screens because that's just, that's just what I do. I like to, I like to, to move on two screens. So, all right. Um, so simple secrets to support your child's mental health. This is a huge, huge um, piece that I am incredibly passionate about. And I, I want to share with you, I kind of want to like gradually move into this, but um, 
these are my kids. This is my beautiful Wyatt and my gorgeous daughter, Lena. They are my everything. Well, not everything because part of, you know, I'm, I am part of the everything too. So let's, that's a whole nother Oprah talk though. Um, so you look at me and you cry, everything hurts. I hold you and whisper that everything can heal. One of the many, many roles that we play as parents is being that person, being that heart, being that comfort, being that listening ear just when our kids need it. And that is that is nine times out of 10, some of the biggest work that we have to do is just showing up and being that that hold, that whisper, and that presence. So yes, I am Amanda Ertz. I am a glorious mother, uh, and I'm, I'm also a proud single mother. I'm proud to say that I have figured this out and I, I do it day and I do day in and day out. Um, and I have, I've mastered it. I, I, I feel like there's been a lot of trial and error, let me tell you. And, and there are still a few days where I'm like, Oh, I don't know if I quite got that, but I have, I've really figured out some things and I'm so, so excited to share them with you. Um, I did spend 22 years as an educator, both as a teacher and an assistant principal. And I will tell you that this picture right here depicts uh, the last eight years of my journey. I was going to the schools every day and I was uh, pouring my heart into the students' lives and the teachers. And I was doing some really good work, people. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I, you know, there were a lot of initiatives that I oversaw and a lot of really incredible conversations and in learning occurred both at both ends. Right. However, I was coming home each night and some of you might be able to relate to this. I was coming home each night. I was exhausted. I had nothing left in my bucket. I had zero empathy for my kids. And it was a little bit of a hot mess in my house, right? But I'll tell you, I kept doing it every day, day in and day out, because I thought that was the right thing to do, right? Work really hard, give my heart and soul, come home, be a really not so great uh, mom. Okay, and that that's truly how I felt. So if you can relate, honestly, like... And, and that's just part of that mom piece, right? Of that guilt of like, whoo, I gotta, I gotta do it all, right? And here's the thing, moms, you don't, you don't, okay? So this is, this is, this was the shift for me. I've realized after my 22 years of experience that, oh my goodness, everything I was doing inside the schools, all that skill set I had, that was the same skill set that I needed to be using at home with my kids. And so that is why I feel so incredibly confident and, uh, and motivated to share a few of my tools with you tonight, all right? Because these tools are, are transformative and they have shifted not only my life, but I know they're gonna shift yours. So here we go. Right now, before we start, I want everyone to just, just take a minute. I want you to take your hands, you got two of them, okay? Put them over your heart right now. All right, and, and if you don't want anyone to see you, close your eyes, just, just turn your screen off, okay? I want everyone to just breathe in and release. Breathe in, release. I want you to say to yourself right now in your mind, I am doing the best best that I can. I am worthy. I am loved. And I am a loving mom. And there goes that gorgeous peaceful meditation because my poodle is barking. So this is when you're going to see that I'm a real mom because I'm going to take a quick break. Not super quick, but I'm going to go close the door. So just hang tight. All right, loves. So here we go. 
back to this. Um, this is this is something that's really important to me. Hands over heart. I'm worthy. I'm loved. I can do this. Okay. You got. You got it. You got to be in that place and that heart space of I can do this because you know what? Parenting motherhood is hard. I get it, but you know what? It doesn't always have to be that way. All right. So hopefully some of these tools I give you tonight give you that little boost, some of that inspiration. Okay. So the the four pieces we're going to really dive into tonight are number one, how to use emotional language. Okay, and what that is, and using it on a consistent and regular basis. And my girl Jenna has become very, very good at this. All right. Number two, how to validate feelings. Okay. Three, how to coach your kids, right? I'm not saying how to parent your kids. I want you to think about how to coach your kids. It's a little bit different. And then number four, using language that creates connection. All right. All right, so I want you to pop a pop a thumb up in the chat if you are with me. I want to see those thumbs up. Let me see them. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, loves. Let's keep let's keep moving this. So, one of the best ways to connect with your kids in terms of their mental health, because right now we're we're talking specifically about that mental health piece, um, is that you as a parent have to first of all recognize that you are not built of armor. Do you know that moms? You are not built of armor. You are actually a human being. You actually have feelings. You are allowed moms to break down. You're allowed to have a shitty day. Okay. So when you are having a moment, it is okay. And it is actually so therapeutic for your kids to hear. I am feeling frustrated right now because I work so hard uh, during the day to get this done. And guess what? It all exploded. Or guess what? Today I'm feeling happy because the leaves are so gorgeous. Your kids need to hear from you how you are feeling. And when they hear from you about how you are feeling, they on turn, in turn, are going to feel empowered to share their feelings with you. All right. So the first part of raising an emotionally well and healthy, vibrant child is you. It comes from here, this heart center. How am I feeling? How am I sharing this? Okay. And 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 the other part of this, right, is we all have feelings, but if, if we know that we don't always express our feelings in the right way, it's okay to also say to our kids, hey, I'm feeling a little bit angry right now. I'm, I am hot. I got to exit the room. Okay. That is also huge because that right there shows your kids that, whoa, mom had an emotion, but whoa, mom also knows how to exit. Mom knows how to take care of herself and be, be in her power, be appropriate right? That's part of our modeling. All right. So here we go. We're, we're moving. We're grooving. So in order to also support our children, there's this, this is the other flip side of it. When you notice your child is calm or happy or content, I like to really work with, with my kids. And this takes one minute, but you know what? This one minute becomes, you know, it becomes expansive. When your child is calm, ask them to identify why they're calm. You can say something like, hey, I noticed that you're just sitting here and you're coloring and it seems really peaceful. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Okay, let, let them come up with the word. Let them come up with the feeling, not the emotion. Try really hard not to identify it for them. And if you do, it's okay, just keep, just keep moving, okay? For our younger ones, sometimes we have to give them that, that, that word that says, it looks like right now you're feeling calm. Is that right? Because you're coloring. Okay. You need, also need to do this for happy. And the reason is, is that we don't give happy enough attention. I know we give sad and angry and mad and frustrated a lot of attention because those are big feelings, right? Okay, but happy and calm are also big feelings and they're big feelings because those are the feelings that we often desire. And if we don't show our kids how to get to the happy, how to get to the calm, that's where they lose the empowerment, okay? So when you notice them being happy, say, hey, what's making you feel so happy right now? 
Oh, it's because you just went for a bike ride. Oh, it's because we just baked cookies, right? Okay, so then what you're doing is you are creating actually an, an incredible, an incredible synapses in your kid's brain, right? This, this thing up here, it's so powerful. Your kid is like, oh, that made me happy. So when the next time they are feeling out of sorts, frustrated, angry, overwhelmed, whatever it is, they have an idea about how to return to that place, okay? All right, so if we were to go back, number one, moms, you've got to recognize your emotions. You have got to own them, show them, and be okay with them, okay? And when our kids see that, that's the shift. They will be empowered to do the same. All right, so here we go. The second part of this is to validate feelings, all right? So validation is... Let me, let me, let me break this down for you. My daughter walks in to the kitchen. Okay. Anyone, can anyone relate to that? You, you know, suddenly your kid walks into the kitchen or into some space and all of a sudden, you know, you know, something's going to, something's going to drop. There's a mic drop coming. The, right. Who can relate to that? Okay. So my daughter walks in the kitchen. I hear like the, you know, like this, it's more of like a, like a stop, right? Okay, and she she flicks her head, right? Has that ever happened to anyone? Right, because my, my daughter, had she learned that when she was two. She learned this move, okay? So I'm like, okay, we got something going on here. So, and I hear her story, and I hear the story about how at recess, her two best friends, September and April, and I, I clearly created those names because it just came to me, September and April, but it's a real story. I, I just want you to know that, just, just made up names. Um, they got mad because I was friends with both of them and I can't be friends with both of them, they said. And so, so September told me that I couldn't be friends with her anymore because I was friends with April and I had to be September's best friend. And I don't know what to do. And I'm really, really sad. And right now my stomach hurts because I'm so sad about this. Okay. All right. So moms, here you go. You hear my poodle? She, she thinks I'm upset, but I'm not. I'm okay, Vegas. So moms, you're going to say, I hear you say that you are sad. I hear you say that your stomach hurts. I understand that September and April made you feel upset. Okay. You're not going to come up with your own words. You're going to repeat what your kids said. It's that, that's it. That, that is what you do. You validate, you validate what you just heard. Because here's the thing, moms. If you decide to say something else, like, okay, here's what you're gonna do to fix it. Here's the next step. Let And, and I can't believe this happened. I'm just, you know, right there, moms. You didn't hear. And that message goes to your child that mom didn't hear me. I didn't want her advice. I just wanted to tell her, okay? So some of the things that we can avoid, and trust me, I've done this, but I've learned the hard way that we probably shouldn't, you know, um, you know, saying things like, this isn't a big deal, or you shouldn't be upset about this, come on. Like, because my problems, like my problems are bigger, right? I'm, I'm covering the mortgage and I have adult things going on, and right? All the things that our kids have no context for. So their world right now, my daughter's world is about April and September and her friendship. And this friendship is at the focal point of her day. Okay. And even though all of these things are over here that are at the focal point of my day that are really important, that doesn't matter. What matters is what's going on in my kid's world. All right. Moving on. This is my daughter. This is my gorgeous Lena. Can you see the sass? Can you see the hair flip? Yeah. Can you all see it? I wish I had a video because it would be, it would be fantastic. All right. So our children, this, this is key. This, you write this down, put this on a sticky It take a screenshot. Our children begin to heal the moment they feel heard. Okay. So moms, your children need to hear you say, I hear you say that. I heard you say that. That's all they need. That's when they begin to heal. 
Okay. And that's when, that's when we can begin to shift out of, out of, out of this anxiety and this frustration and, and all of these big feelings that our kids often feel with a very simple strategy of, I heard you, I see you, right? Number three. Okay, so this is about shifting into a role of being a coach. Yep, okay. Um, and I'm not talking about, you know, you know, when I think of a coach, I'm not talking about my varsity soccer coach who uh, like pushed me to the limit to the point where I fell off the, the cliff, right? I didn't literally fall off, but that's not the type of coach I'm talking about. I'm talking about the coach that is going to give, give you feedback and support you and encourage you and motivate you, right? Okay, so... Some of the pieces that you can do, moms, right now to help your own children find ways to support their big feelings. Number one, make a calm down room so or a corner. Both my kids have calm down corners. My son has this fantastic cubby in his room, and we, we put in two dog beds and some fairy lights. And you know what? When he needs some space and to get away from it all, that's where he goes. My daughter's calm down corner is actually in this gorgeous office space of mine. I have a little coloring nook like over there. Uh, I got, I have her colors right here and she, I'll tell you, um, in the morning or, um, you know, when I'm on a, on a call, she's already down here. She's already, she's already, you know, getting herself ready for the day. And I know that if I find her down here after school, that means that she, she needs that space. And, and I honor that. Okay. So think about a space and a place like that for your kids. Now, another part of my daughter's calm down corner is the, the bubbles, the bubble wrap. And, and, and I did this before they were the poppets, you know, those poppets that are everywhere. It's like the huge craze. And I, I am not endorsing poppets. I'm not a sponsor. I'm just saying that right now, but it's the bubbles, right? So anytime I get bubble wrap in like that Amazon package or wherever it is, I save it because you know what? For my daughter, popping those bubbles, that's a release for her. And she loves it and it feels so good but I had to work with her to understand what that was, okay? So the, the, another thing you can do is to practice breathing, all right? And you only wanna practice this, and this only takes two minutes, loves, just two minutes. And you wanna do it when your kids are calm or they're happy or they're content. You never wanna say to your kid, just breathe when they're having a meltdown, okay? Because when they're having a meltdown, they're up here, they're in this red area, they, can't, they cannot hear you. It's almost like a brick wall. So you want to teach them when they're calm. My favorite way to teach being calm and taking and using breath work is to breathe in the smell, the rose, whatever it is, the hot cocoa, blow out the candle. Okay. And that's how my kids remember. You got to breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. So fragrance, push out the candle. Okay. And you got to, you know, just, just one or two minutes a night and just practice, just have fun with it. Okay. Um, uh, depending upon how high your child can count, uh, counting up and counting down. Okay. So counting up, counting down, it takes your child's brain away from the problem, from the feeling and makes them focus on the numbers. So it's a big shift. It's a boost. Okay. Work with your kids, figure out what those recipes are. Okay, so what, what are there? You know, maybe it's going back to our previous presenter, you know, Jana Jackis, and she talked all about this nature play. Maybe, maybe that's it, okay? Make it okay to take a break. Always save the mental health of your child before you save the tradition and the ritual, okay? Let me give you an example. Um, growing up for me, family dinners were... A, kind of a like a priority. In fact, it, they were right up there with church. All right, and and missing missing dinner at night was was a really big deal, regardless of how I was feeling. And I there is a lot that I believe in with family dinners. It's community. It's fun. We play games during our family dinners. Okay. However, if your child is having a rough day and sitting down for dinner that night isn't uh, isn't going to serve them. Let them take a break. Give them a break. Let them let them go to their space. Let them vent. Let them be. 
never ever put the tradition or the ritual or the expectation before the mental health, okay? And again, go back to creating those ideas with, with your kids. Okay, so I feel like I'm missing a slide. Hold on, wait a second. I am, it's okay. You guys are gonna watch me do something. I, I do it all the time. I'm gonna stop sharing for a super quick minute so I can find the slide that I was supposed to share with you. Um, and this is actually one of my one of my favorites. So, uh, and this is about how we how we talk with our kids and not to them. And um, believe it or not, this was something that mm -hmm. I I really didn't learn how to do. Here we go. Uh, until um, hmm, for 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 quite a while. So I want I want you to have this tool now because I feel like this is this is what really, really shifted me. All right, so I wanna screen share again and I wanna go here. All right, don't you guys love how I just, this is how we do it. Okay, super powerful graphic, but it's more than this. Okay, now, now as we, we move into this, I want you right now to envision your kitchen table, okay? And I'm gonna talk to you about my kitchen table. My kitchen table currently, there's paintbrushes, there's markers, there's arts and crafts paper, there's the permission slips, there's the homework, there's the books that we're supposed to read, there's the art project we started a week ago, there's all the things, right? All the things, okay? And during the week, Monday through Friday, we eat around the kitchen table, okay? I have someone knocking on my door. It, that is my son. That is my son. Buddy, I'm on a call. See, there you go, mom, all the way, all the way. Okay, so kitchen table. When, so the expectation that I have with my kitchen table is Monday through Friday. It is super cool. Do whatever you need to do. Build your, build, your bridges, do your homework, use the glitter, paint, do all the things. We're going to eat around it. But by Saturday, when we have Grammy and Bud come over for dinner, and those are my parents, right? We call them Grammy and Bud. When we have Grammy and Bud come over for dinner, I need the I need the table, I need it cleaned off, okay? And so because I need it cleaned off, I'm going to support you. I'm gonna do it with you. Not all the way, right? But in the very beginning, I'm gonna show you, okay, this is how we clean a table. We take the paint brushes and we take them and we run them through the sink with the water, right? Okay, we put the paper back here. We put the books here, right? I'm gonna walk through the steps and I'm gonna do it with and the reason I'm doing it with is because when I have a high expectation, my expectation is up here, that by Saturday night, that table is clean with high support. That right there, my loves, that, that is the juicy spot for parenting, okay? Now, some of you may recognize this area where we have super high expectations for parenting, but no support. Okay, I grew up in this area. This is the two. You do this or this happens. You, this, you need to be this way or this happens, okay? If you don't do this, you are a bad person. It's the blaming, the stigmatizing, right? So it's, you better clean that kitchen table by Saturday or you might lose something, okay? So what's happening here is we're saying, yeah, I have a high expectation. However, I'm not gonna help you to get there, all right? This in, this is the neglectful, uh, I'm not gonna do either. I have no expectations, nor do I have any support I'm gonna offer you, okay? And so for this expectation, I don't know if my kitchen table really works the best, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go to electronics, okay? So for electronics, my son recently got a phone about a year and a half ago because he needs one um, to communicate with me when he goes between homes, okay? All the right reasons. However, I know in my heart of hearts that my son has the capacity to take that phone into his room and play games. Uh-huh, yeah, they're smart and he doesn't know that I'm so smart, right? So it would be neglectful of me to say, oh, I don't care, whatever, I'm so tired, I just can't do it, right? And I am so tired, I am, I am. However, then he's gonna be so tired because I know he's gonna be on it till 11 or 12 because that's just who he is, right? Because once he's in a game, he's like, yeah, 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 right, okay? And that also means that I have, I'm, I'm not doing anything to, so I have no expectation 
I'm telling him, I don't care. I don't care what time you go to bed. And I also don't care that you're tired the next day for school. Okay. Whereas if I say, hey, bud, you have a phone. I'm going to let you have your little game time. But by, by eight o'clock, that phone gets plugged in, in the kitchen. Okay. And, uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to support you. I'm going to give you some timers and some things to get there. Okay. This last part, and I will, I will let you know, I dip into this as a mother and, and there is nothing wrong moms with dipping into this because sometimes our kids need to be protected. Sometimes they need that therapeutic touch. Okay. And that right there, right, that right here, moms, that is what we are good at. Okay. But we also want to live up here, high expectations. So the therapeutic protective side of parenting is all support, very little expectation. Oh, you made a huge catastrophe on the kitchen table with the glitter and then this and the markers and the paper and the, uh, and we have people coming over for dinner. I'll take care of it because I do everything. Okay. All right. So what we're doing right there, moms, is we're teaching our children that they don't have to ever take any responsibility for themselves, okay? And we wanna maintain that high expectation and those high levels of support, okay? So I'm gonna stop sharing again, and I'm gonna go back to my other slideshow that I managed to pop out of during the course of this workshop. So hang tight here. We are coming to a gorgeous close. Um, here we go. Okay. All right. So do you want to continue to work with me? There are a variety. There are a variety of ways. And I'm going to have my, um, uh, I'm going to have uh, Jenna, if she could pop the link tree into my, uh, my chat and my link tree has all of it in there because there's there's way too many ways to get in touch with me and so if you pop into my link tree you can find every single way to get hold of me and every single way to interact with me okay so so check that out but right now today I am I am I want to support you in transforming your life so you feel confident and you feel empowered as a mother all right I want to show you how to stay calm during the chaos. I want to help you feel aligned to your family values. I want you to know how to respond rather than react. I want you to feel confident in every move and decision that you make as a parent. And I want to help you create more meaningful relationships with everyone in your life. And that's the big secret, right? The tools and the methods that I have, that I have created and developed are not just tools to use with your kids. Guess what? You can use them with anyone. So don't, don't tell your partners, don't tell your friends, don't tell your colleagues that you've tapped into me, okay? Uh, and this is where your new superpower is because it's, it's inside the Back Pocket Parenting Tools course. All right, so if you're interested, I want you to check it out. There are two different sides to the course. There's one that is strictly a course. You can take it on your own. There's a guidebook, there are videos, there are how-tos, there's support. You can also, you can also bump that up to a 30-day package with me where you get to have a Voxer app, walkie-talkie chat. So if you don't know what Voxer is, it's this incredible app and it's all about walkie-talkies because parents, I understand sitting down for a Zoom meeting to get coached is one of the most difficult things that a mom can do. It is not, you just can't do it. Okay, so when you download this app and you invest in this package with me, what you're doing is you're saying, I'm putting Amanda in my back pocket and when I meet her during the next meltdown, I'm gonna pull it out and have a conversation with her. Mm -hmm. I'm putting Amanda in my back pocket because the next time I have a celebration and no one's home to do it with me to celebrate, I want her to know. And guess what? When I am in between dropping my kids off at school, I am gonna respond to that walkie talkie because I care about you and I support you. All right. And I want you to transform. I want you to feel confident and empowered. And I say that from the very depths of my heart. We are here for each other. So here we go. If you have any questions, I'm here. And I want to celebrate you right now for taking this step for being in this workshop tonight. All right. Thank you.